Hi there, and uh, welcome to this session um, covering off um, when we have issues or imbalances between either our age debtors or age creditors report uh, and the nominal control account, uh, which is then presented onto a trial balance. So basically, we've, we've, we've basically got a difference between the figures, which obviously we shouldn't have. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just open up the software and get that on there. So what we've got is um, a scenario where in our sales ledger uh, we've got an imbalance. So I'll just show you an example of that. So what I've got is um, if I just run my aged creditors, oh sorry, aged debtors report. Okay, so the summary, all the detail, both will both will work. So I'll just click it OK on that. So what I'm doing is uh, the scenario I've got is I've entered an invoice uh, dated 31st of March but I'd already closed off March at the point when I did that so I'd done it maybe in the 3rd or 4th of uh, of April uh, but I'd, I'd put it back as being the 31st of March and the nomin ledger was already closed for sales ledger transactions from that particular module so I'll just show you the uh, the setup we've got okay so we've got maintain accounting periods so as can be seen March is closed for sales transactions to the nomin ledger but April is open and I've then keyed in an invoice which was dated in March after that scenario was in place. So I'll go back and run my report that I was just referring to, the age creditors report, or sorry, the age debtors report. So I'll just run the summary. Okay, and in order to now get the report off the, that needs to be presented for the end of the month, I need to change this date back here to be the end of the month date. So I'm choosing 31st of March there. And I'm ticking that I'd like this report to be run retrospectively. So if I then click OK, if I look at that there now, and if I just scroll to the bottom, we can see we've got a total of 17603970.09. Okay, so then if I go to the nominal ledger and I run my trial balance, um, any of the trial balance reports would be fine for this. So again, to the end of March, I'm going to run this report. Okay, and we can see on there it balances 17591970.09, which is a difference of £1,200. And this is the invoice that we posted after the month end date. Okay, so in order to see this, see this, uh, these particular transactions, etc., what I need to do is, uh, in order to check my figures uh, and decide which is the correct figure, uh, I need to run my debtors reconciliation inquiry. Um, so it's under sales ledger, sales inquiries and debtors reconciliation inquiry. Then I choose the month in question, so the month is March, click display, and you can see that it's saying that basically the nominal balance should be reading 1759197.09. And obviously this is the balance that my report should be re reading as well, whereas my report was reading uh, £1,200 higher than that. Okay, now the £1,200 transaction in question, I'll just, I know what it is because I've deliberately put it on there. So if I go in, it's just the one on this cash account here. Okay, so we can see that transaction there. It's £1,200 dated the 28th uh, of March. Uh, but when I actually posted it into the system, the nominal ledger, so it goes to the nominal ledger transactions, this was already in April, so obviously I would have expected that to have gone into March, but because March was closed and April was open, it goes into the earliest month that's possible to be posted to, which is April. Okay, so if I close that, uh, if I then open up this debt reconciliation inquiry again, so that's my £1,200. Okay, so I say if I look at the end of March, I've got that figure. If I then look at the end of uh, April's, so click display. So obviously all the transactions that I should be seeing in here. So against, as I click onto each of these, you get transactions that it shows you that make up the movement for the month within the ledger. So I'll click on the invoices one there and see we've got £1,200. And I can see straight away here that the date of it is actually the 28th of March. So although my month that I'm in is the 1st of April to the 30th of April, because I've keyed this in after the month was closed to nominal uh, for March, um, it's gone in and it's hit in month four now. So this is why our difference, and you can see now that the closing balance there does now tie in to to my report that I've currently got, which is 17603970.09. So that's, that's that scenario shown on there, and that's the transaction that's causing the problem. If you're doing this part way through the month or something like that, and you have quite a lot of transactions here, you have got the ability to right-click export and send that, send all off to Excel just for you to then sort down or sort by date to see if there are any that are dated into an earlier month but have gone through in the, in the current month instead. Okay, 
<clears throat> that's the most common uh, problem that we get now with the Sage 200 2015 and again there's the same sort of scenario for purchase ledger where it is actually a lot more common so you are, you are more likely to get somewhere someone may give you an invoice a couple of months late um, the hope is that you would have reconciled it off at the month end uh, before you close the month off and therefore you shouldn't get this scenario but if you happen to try and run the aged debtors or aged creditors report after the month end date uh, and after you've closed it off there is this scenario where you could cause uh, problems and uh, differences between the trial balance and the newly produced um, retrospective aged debtors or creditors report so that's that scenario in there um, another scenario that we used to have more commonly but doesn't seem to happen in 2015 anymore is one where we've gone in and tidied up some transactions after the month end date um, but but the transaction was dated early than the end of the month so for instance I might I may have an invoice so if I just go across to say my purchase ledger and I'll just try running this one through okay as I say it doesn't actually cause a problem now in this system uh, in the Tatra 2015, but it used to in some earlier versions of the software. So what I've got is, so uh, it, it might be that I'd, I'd put a, a supplier payment on account um, in advance of the actual invoice coming in. So I'll put it in here and I'll say it's dated, um, so we say it was dated um, maybe the 1st of March. Okay, uh, and it was Sorry, this is the uh, this is the pattern. I'll I'll put the invoice on first. Apologies, so I did the wrong bit on there. Okay, so I've got my invoice. So I'll say that one is for the first of March. Okay, so that's going to calculate a due date of the end of, end of March. So I'll put in there, say references one two three, and I'll say it's a hundred pounds plus VAT. Okay, I'll say that it doesn't require authorization currently. Um, so I'll just save that one off. Okay, so there's hundred pound plus that was hundred, which is hundred and twenty pound. Uh, then I'll do a payment against that account for hundred and twenty pounds. Okay, so again it was due the thirty first. So I'll say that we paid it the thirtieth of March, uh, sixteen. Okay, so it's just a payment. 120 okay and I've put it on as a, like a payment on account and not allocated it off straight away so then later on I'm coming up and I'm going to now allocate that transaction off so I'll go in here click enter transactions click allocation okay so you can see there there's but there's my transaction and it's due the 30th of March um, and then if I scroll down to the bottom of this list I should have my uh, invoice there for the hundred and twenty pound, which was due to be paid by the thirty first of March. Okay, so you can see we're all within our payment terms, etc. And everything, everything looks correct on there. However, because I'm now doing it today, which is the first of April, you can see the allocation date at the top is coming up as today's date. Now this always happens; it always comes up with that. But what the date for that needs to be read is the when the actual payment date was. So in this scenario, it would be the thirtieth of March. So I'll change that back to the thirtieth of March. Now I can just allocate as normal, uh, and I put 120 and 120 there. Okay, so that's now allocated that one off. Now, if I hadn't changed that date back, that's when it could cause, uh, in older versions of the software, the aged creditors and aged debtors reports didn't use to calculate as well as it does now, um, and it used to cause an imbalance on the between the ledgers uh, when you were running the retrospective aged uh, aged debtors or aged creditor report. Because the allocation date up there was reading the 1st of April, it would look at the invoice and say, oh, this, this, when was this one allocated? Oh, it was allocated the 1st of April. Uh, and it used to say that, oh, because that was allocated the 1st of April, if I'm running the report as at the 31st of March, uh, it would still be, still be outstanding because the allocation date was the 1st of April. Whereas, obviously, on this one, it was actually paid on the 30th of March. So that needs to be the allocation date that we put up there. I say, if I had put the 1st of April, then I'd run the retrospective age creditors report. Uh, it would have included this invoice as being incorrectly still outstanding at the month end, therefore leading to an imbalance of £120 between the ledger and the, uh, and the nominal control account. OK, 
Okay, that's uh, that concludes this uh, situ this scenario. Or sorry, this uh, this little training session. Hopefully, it's been informative for you. Um, any any more that you need, obviously um, call the telephone number on our website, and uh, somebody will be more than happy to help you with that. Thanks very much. Cheers.